Hello everybody. I hope everyone's having a wonderful afternoon today. Today I wanted to bring to attention some of the tools that I use. Well, at least one particular tool that I use on a daily basis, and that is a pendulum. I've had so many different people ask me about, first of all, what a pendulum is, why do I use it, what can it be used for, and I'll give you just a little information. So first of all, where pendulums come from, that actually I've done a lot of research on and no one really knows where they came from. We just know that some people theorize that it actually predates history. Uh, one of the time frames was before the 1900s, but there is even evidence in ancient Rome and Greek, uh, Greece, being used. These tools were used as divination tools to help us in a lot of different ways. A lot of oracles use them as well to give out their prophecies and to just get really in tune with themselves and the energy around them. So I actually started using them about six years ago when I went on to the Dr. Bradley and Nelson Healers Retreat in Park City. I went up to Utah and I was really fascinated to see that there were people using these pendulums while doing the emotion code, while practicing the emotion code and the body code. At that time, I was really new into the scene. I had been practicing this way testing, which is something I will definitely uh, discuss in a later video. But I was practicing sway testing and I thought, whoa, this is really interesting. This is a totally different way to use energy and to identify what the energies mean and what they're saying. As I continued my research and continued in learning how to, how, how to practice the emotion code and I got my certification, I started to really notice that the pendulum is something that I was really readily able to tap into. It was awesome because there was no like for muscle testing. You can actually sometimes influence what the answer is for yourself. And I didn't want to do that. I wanted to be able to say purely that this energy, these answers were coming through me to the client as pure as possible. There are a few different misconceptions of, uh, of course, it's bad, it's evil, it's not good. Those are some of the common misconceptions of what a pendulum actually is and what it does. What I have noticed is everything in the world of energy, in the world of spirituality, in the world of religion, in humanity as a whole, even people that are atheist, one common theme is are you using it for light or dark? That's what it comes down to, folks. So was I using the pendulum for light or dark? And the number one answer I've always for myself wanted was I want to use it for light, for good, to help people in their times of struggle, in their times of need, whatever the case may be that they're going through. I wanted to use the pendulum to be able to help guide me and help them. One of the cool things about a pendulum is that you can, they come in all sorts of sizes, all sorts of different ways to get them. And it's really cool. This one is actually copper. And on the bottom, it's an amethyst stone. And on the top, it's a Lumerian star seed. I got this up in Virginia City. If you're familiar with the Nevada area. Virginia City is a ghost town, basically, and I was at a ghost tour, really getting to know some of the spirits up there. It was really fun, but there was a beautiful woman that was making these, and it called to me so much. Uh, Lumerian star seeds, I've always been very attracted to them. Amethyst stones, those are, uh, they help with psychic ability. And the copper actually is very helpful for repelling any energies that might be 
attracted to the copper. So if you have a copper bracelet, you know that it helps with the energy movement. Same, same concept, just in a pendulum. The next thing I would like to say is that whenever I'm using a pendulum, I, you can either say pray or meditate. Praying, what I've heard and what I've really resonated with is praying is talking to God. Meditating is listening to him, listening to what the message is that is flowing through us. So when I start doing any practice with my pendulum, I pray. I pray for protection. I pray for safety. I pray for this to always be used for the highest good of myself, the client, and all. Because when we heal ourselves, we're actually healing other people as well. It's a ripple effect. We are helping ourselves and therefore we are helping others because how many of us have had the experience of a family member that makes life a little bit harder for others because they're so mad and angry and they're holding on to bitterness. Those are the types of things where when we heal ourselves, we're actually healing others as well. If you come across someone that can't let go of grudges, and even though you've moved on from that issue or that concern or that hurt, or you've even apologized for it and they still are holding that grudge, then that is a part of themselves that is unhealed and it is preventing you in certain ways, of course, and them from really truly moving forward. So when we heal ourselves, we are actually healing others. And today I want to teach you another way to be guided by energy and to heal. I'm actually going to grab one more thing. That's the emotion code chart. I'm going to use the emotion code chart to help understand exactly how to use the, excuse me, the pendulum. First of all, like I said, I pray. Please help me, guide me, whatever it is that we are going to work with. Let it be for the highest good. Because we don't want anything, at least I don't, and I'm sure that the people watching today here don't want anything to be brought through that is negative or dark or any of those things. We want to be able to really connect to our highest selves, whatever makes you comfortable. I never say you have to believe what I believe because it's not fair. Everyone has the ability to have their own choices and beliefs and word choice. So God, universe, guides, source, whatever words connect to you, Jesus. I've had a lot of clients that come through the doors and they're like, I don't believe in any of this. And I'm like, well, in reality, if you believe that there are miracles in the world, then you kind of do believe in this. But that's beside the point. So we're going to say whatever your higher power's name is, whatever you connect with the most, whatever resonates with you, is who we're going to be calling in to ask for help and guidance on this pendulum journey. So that is our prayer. And now we will meditate. Meditating is asking the questions and receiving the answers. So right now I'm going to ask, do I have any trapped emotions or energies that I can release that will help me? Let's put this down here. Sorry about that. Help me heal. So for me, and everyone is a little bit different, my yeses are circles. And you can see. I'm not moving my arm, I'm not moving my elbow, my arm is actually stable on the chair or on the desk. So I'm just going to let it flow and I'm going to start it again so you can see a full range. I'm going to stop it fully. Do I have any trapped energies or emotions that I can release that will help me heal? 
and you see that there's no movement aside from the positive thought. So like I said, for me, it's a circle. Okay. And to show you what a no is, you can either think a negative thought, you can say negative things, or you can simply say, show me no, show me no, show me no. I, at this point, do not like saying negative words because I can feel it inside me when I'm saying them. So to show me no. And you see that it is just swinging back and forth and I'm gonna say, show me yes. Show me yes. Show me yes. And if you notice any movement, it's little to none, but not enough to truly change the direction of the pendulum itself. Show me no, show me no, show me no. And you see that all it is, is the energy that is flowing through me, through my hands, is flowing through the pendulum. And I'm just thinking again, yes, yes, positive. Let's put this back up again so that we can see and talk. Sorry, my setup is not the best, but I am sure that that will evolve with time. All right, so let's start off with the emotion code. This is what I do to help my clients on a daily basis. So we did already establish that there are trapped emotions that I can release today to help me heal. All right, let's put this up. Is the emotion in column A? I'm getting a no. Is the emotion in an odd row? Yes. Is it in row one? No. Row three? Row five. So row five. Is it the first emotion? Nope. Second emotion? Third emotion? Fourth emotion? The fourth emotion. It is unsupported. Okay. So we know that the emotion is unsupported and the pendulum is going wild. <laughs> it is saying, yes, this is exactly the energy that you need to help clear. Unsupported, do we need to know anything else? No, we don't need to know anything else, which in the emotion code, if you study into the emotion code, you'll see that sometimes you need to know more. Sometimes you don't need to know anything else at all. You just need to know that that's the emotion that you're resonating with or that you've felt at different times. For fun, I am just going to keep going to help with the practice of how to use our pendulum, okay? So unsupported is the emotion. Okay, you got it. Uh, did this happen before the age of 30? No. 31? 32? 33? 33 years old and you see that the pendulum is going round and round and when we see that that means it's a positive so 33 okay is there anything else that we need to know about this energy this unsupported emotion all right can we go ahead and release it perfect and I hope you guys can all see that when I say we can go ahead and release it we can go ahead and release it in the emotion code, and I'm going to release it since we're here, we swipe or use magnets three times. Why? Because we are activating the vagus nerve and we are helping release those endorphins that have not been released or help process the emotion. Back again to the pendulum. Have we fully released this emotion? Okay. I would love to be very thorough with my clients and with my sessions. So are there any hidden emotions? Nope. Are there any underlying emotions that are preventing me from healing this emotion? Nope. Are there any emotional resonances? No again. Perfect. Thank you. So it is a pretty simple process. You can use a pendulum. There are times where I've even just used my necklace and a necklace is 
the sufficient weight to be able to use that as well. Although sometimes it spins out of control because it can get, it's, it's kind of lighter. But knowing that you have different options, some people use dowsing rods, which you can make them from hangers at home, put two straws on the bottom of the hanger and they're long sticks. I personally don't use those, but I have seen many people use them with really great results. You can use a pendulum. And then when we do the video on the sway testing, you can see that you can actually become a human pendulum as well. That'll be for another video, another episode, and I hope that this helps you. Really understand, first of all, how to use a pendulum and what it can look like. Uh, there are people that if you want to get a best line, baseline, you just say, show me yes, show me yes, show me yes. And then you'll be shown yes, show me no, show me no. And then you will be shown no. So there are some people that sway back and forth. I'll move it a little because I don't, mine don't really do that. But back and forth, some people, they go side to side, which I've seen as well. Just going side to side instead for yes and no, uh, depending on the person. Uh, back and forth, side to side. But you will start to connect with your pendulum and really understand what your pendulum is saying to you when you're practicing and when you're connecting. I do always recommend cleansing your pendulums, either while or after working with someone else or working with your energy as well, because these are objects that are being used to help people. And sometimes people have some negativity attached to them, even though they're working towards really taking out that negativity, that dualism, we got to remember that sometimes there are things that are attached to us that we might not want to allow to be attached to other people. So cleansing your stones is really important. You can sage them. You can put them on selenite, which I have back there, a selenite tower and a sel selenite block, which I set them on and then cleanse the selenite as well but those are different tools that will help you keep your energetic hygiene clean and clear and keep your pendulum very happy. There have been times way before when I was not sure about energy and didn't really know a lot of the ins and outs where my pendulum would become very confused and there was never a really clear yes or no answer. And when I started really understanding it, it was like, oh, I have these things that are jumbled. Am I proud of that? No, but you know, we're learning and we're progressing. So always keep that in mind that if you really do want to keep the pendulum clean, it's just like a house. It's just like saging. You want to cleanse it in different ways. You can put it in the moon, the full moon. You can do all kinds of different ways to keep your stones clean, but make sure that you do that because you don't want to confuse answers. You don't want to jumble everything up together. And you also really want to get clear, concise information across to either yourself or in my case to clients Well, and myself as well, because I do work on myself on a pretty regular basis. So I hope that this video helps you today and that you really get a little bit more of an understanding of what pendulums are, how to use them, and how to cleanse them and keep them clean. Getting your definitive yes and no answers are super important and maybe just a little bit more about how to use the emotion code, which all we did was, is the emotion in column A, or in an odd row, A, if it's an A, then we've cleared out half of this whole list. If it's in an odd row, then we've cleared out all of the even rows that are here. And then if it's one, three, four, five, which then again has cleared out another portion. And we're just trying to cut down a little bit of that time. 
Emotion Code is an amazing, amazing tool to help you clear from unhealed events and traumas. And I hope that today helped you learn how to use your handy dandy pendulum for that too. Thank you and have a wonderful day. I'll see you next time.